the Pentagon's decision to award Raytheon a $5.04 billion contract for its Coyote counter-unmanned aerial systems and QRFS radars is more than just another procurement deal. It signals how deeply drones have reshaped modern warfare and how urgently the U.S. military is adapting its defenses. At a time when small, inexpensive drones are appearing in every major conflict zone, from the deserts of the Middle East to the cities and fields of Ukraine, the Army is seeking reliable solutions that can scale across different operational environments. By locking in Raytheon systems until 2033, the United States is making a long-term bet on technology that combines proven performance with modular adaptability. The Coyote system has evolved far beyond its original concept as a small expendable airframe launched from a canister. Today, it represents a family of interceptors and reconnaissance platforms that can switch between kinetic and non-kinetic missions. In its kinetic form, the Coyote Block 2 carries a radio frequency seeker and a fragmentation warhead capable of destroying fast and maneuvering drones up to 15 kilometers away. Once fired, the interceptor transitions from booster propulsion to a small turbine engine, giving it the speed and endurance needed to engage evasive targets or attempt multiple passes. In its non-kinetic version, formerly referred to as Block 3, the system emphasizes reusability and electronic warfare, providing options such as jamming, surveillance, and communications relay. This dual-track approach gives commanders a choice between destroying drones outright or neutralizing them with less risk of collateral damage. Equally important is the Ku-band radio frequency system, or QRFS, radar. As part of the Army's low, slow, small unmanned aircraft integrated defense system, QRFS is designed to detect and track small aerial targets with minimal radar signatures. Its 360-degree coverage and fire control quality tracks allow operators to manage multiple threats simultaneously, even in cluttered environments like urban areas or bases near civilian infrastructure. When paired with the FAD-C2 command and control system, QRFS and Coyote create a detect-decide-defeat chain that shortens engagement timelines. This means that drones flying low and slow, traditionally difficult to spot with larger radars, can now be engaged within seconds, giving units protection against single intrusions or coordinated swarms. The appeal of the Coyote QRFS combination lies not only in its effectiveness but also in its flexibility. The interceptors can be launched from a wide variety of platforms, including canisters, rails, existing tubes, or even vehicles such as the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. Demonstrations have shown successful launches from helicopters as well, underscoring the system's adaptability. The compact airframe, weighing under 6 kilograms with a wingspan of about 1.5 meters, can carry different payloads and sustain flight for up to 2 hours depending on the configuration. This adaptability allows the same system to be used for intelligence gathering, electronic attack, or kinetic interception depending on mission requirements. For frontline units, this translates into a versatile toolkit that can be tailored to specific threats without requiring entirely new hardware. The strategic implications of this contract are significant. The Army's decision to spread procurement over an eight-year period ensures steady production, predictable logistics, and ongoing training for operators. It also provides industry with the stability to maintain an active production line and invest in incremental upgrades. In the fast-moving world of drone warfare, incremental improvements are essential. Detection algorithms must adapt to new flight profiles, seekers must learn to recognize novel drone signatures, and payloads must evolve to match changing tactics. By securing Raytheon's system for nearly a decade, the Army is creating a foundation that can grow alongside emerging threats rather than constantly chasing them with fragmented solutions. The global context makes this decision even more pressing. In recent years, U.S. military facilities in the Middle East have faced repeated drone intrusions, many carried out with inexpensive, commercially available quadcopters. These aircraft have been used not only for reconnaissance but also for direct attacks with small explosives, forcing bases to remain on constant alert. The war in Ukraine has highlighted another dimension of the problem 
the ability of drone swarms to disrupt logistics, attack artillery positions, and harass command centers. Inexpensive drones, often costing only hundreds of dollars, are being used to impose outsized costs on armored vehicles, artillery pieces, and even air defenses. This asymmetry makes counter-drone capability a baseline requirement for any modern force. Raytheon's Coyote system has already proven itself in multiple demonstrations and deployments. Its ability to re-engage targets if the first pass fails increases the chances of defeating agile drones, while its non-kinetic options provide commanders with less destructive alternatives. This is particularly important in environments where drones may be operating near civilian infrastructure, where the risk of collateral damage must be minimized. Combined with QRFS, which can also support missions against rockets, artillery, and mortars, the system offers a layered defensive solution that goes beyond counter-drone missions. The modularity and scalability of this architecture make it suitable for everything from protecting forward operating bases and logistics hubs to defending dispersed convoys on the move. The economic and industrial aspects of the deal are also notable. A multi-billion dollar contract spread across eight years provides Raytheon with predictable revenue and the Army with predictable supply. This allows for steady training pipelines, consistent spare parts availability, and long-term planning for deployment. It also ensures that U.S. forces can field the same system across multiple theaters without the complications of fragmented procurement. For allied nations observing America's choices, the adoption of a mature, exportable system sends a signal that the U.S. is backing a proven solution that could become a standard among partners facing similar threats. What makes this development particularly interesting is how it bridges the gap between traditional air defense and the unique challenges of modern drone warfare. Conventional air defense systems are optimized for larger, faster, and higher flying targets such as jets, helicopters, and missiles. Small drones fall below the thresholds of many of these systems, slipping through detection ranges and costing far less than the interceptors designed to stop them. The Coyote QRFS solution provides a cost-effective middle layer that is specifically designed to deal with drones while complementing larger air defense systems. This layered approach reflects the reality that no single system can counter every threat, but a network of overlapping capabilities can create a resilient shield. Ultimately, the Pentagon's decision reflects a recognition that drone warfare is not a passing trend but a defining feature of modern conflict. As state and non-state actors continue to adapt low-cost platforms for increasingly sophisticated missions, the United States and its allies must maintain an edge in detection, disruption, and interception. The Coyote and QRFS systems, proven in tests and adaptable in design, offer a pathway to that edge. By investing now, the Army is positioning itself not just to counter today's drones but to evolve alongside the threats of tomorrow. This contract is therefore more than a procurement milestone, it is a statement of strategic intent in an era where the skies are increasingly contested by machines both large and small.